We are going to start it obviously right under the nose. I usually work top to bottom on a portrait. I start with the eyes because we use the eyes to map everything like we talked about. But right under the nose, right under that cupid's bow, is where we're going to start the mouth. I'm going to put that aside for now. And if we imagine sort of our cupid's bow is right there on our nose, we start with just a little, almost looks like a little smile, a little curved line. We're going to be drawing the top part of the top lip. Now, like every other part we've done, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, obviously, we're all very different looking. So, depending on who it is you're looking at, you may be changing sort of the drawing. Um, some people's lips are thinner than others, etc. So, all right, once we have that top part done, almost looks like a, like a bird flying, um, we're going to draw the bottom of the top lip. So, that first line we drew, we're going to draw sort of another, kind of like a little smile. This decides how sort of how wide or thick the top lip is. You can make it really thick, thin, however you want it. I'll put mine something right there. Again, so, just, so now we have sort of a smile and a smile right under it. That's how thick that top lip will be. This line is gonna go from sort of a smile to a little frown to a smile again. Sort of like a little wave there. We'll do the same thing going the other way. We got our smile, a little frown, a little smile. And that strange shape is actually going to be the top lip. So we'll come back to that in a moment because we're going to be adding some shading and value. We follow the same pattern right under the cupid's bow. And then we do it one more time. So this line is going to be the bottom of the bottom lip. Again, wherever you place this line is going to sort of show or say how thick or, or wide that lip is. So if you're doing a specific person, make sure you match it up. And the bottom's a little bit easier just because it's sort of a curve right up to the corners. Have them end a little bit before that top lip so they can sort of meet there because there's actually a little fold on either, you know, where you're sort of, those two come together. All right, value, the change from light to dark. Value is really important on a lot of parts, especially we saw the nose last week. There's a lot of shading that really helped to make the nose look realistic. So same thing with this. Two things we add to make this look realistic. The value, in this case, we start sort of in the, where the bottom and the top li lip meet. That's going to be the brightest, or the, I'm sorry, excuse me, the darkest section. You can even sort of making it a little wider sort of makes it look the wider, the darker and wider this is, the more the mouth looks like it's open. So, change in light to dark, that's value. It's one of our elements of art. When the light is coming over, since the lip isn't a flat surface, we wanna make it 3D, light would hit this in different ways. So we practice value. We're gonna be using that skill here to show the change from light to dark. It's gonna get a little bit darker on the bottom as the lip sort of curves under to meet the chin. If you're looking at a person, picture you're drawing somebody specific, obviously the shape of the lips, we're all different, that will change how this value goes, but also the lighting of the situation. Um, if, is the light from straight, look, you know, sort of aim straight at the person, is, uh, you know, is it coming from the side, something like that. Same idea with value on the top. These corners tend to be the darkest part. And if we can get that value change done very nicely, and it really helps us to make a nice realistic look. Please remember, I've been sort of practicing this, practicing this not only for a long time in my life, but a long time this morning. I spent about an hour playing around with this. So this isn't just me sitting down rolling out of bed to draw this. So give yourselves a chance to practice. So we said there's two things we add to help make this look um, a little bit more realistic. Uh, may have the bottom lip a little bit too big on this one compared to the top. I might, you know, if I was doing this for a real drawing, I may either make the top lip a little bigger or shrink the bottom up but it'll work for what we're doing here. But the second thing that we add is 
wrinkles. Um, even if you're young, heck, even a even darn near an infant, it's gonna have a little bit of wrinkle on the lips, just like we have kind of normal wrinkles on our skin. If you look at your sort of your arm or your top of your hand, you'll see there's little lines. So with the mouth, we want to put this in, but we also want to make sure that we show that it curves, that this lip, especially the bottom, sort of comes out a little bit. It's not flat. So to do that, we start with in the middle, a little line, and then as we go, in this case to the left, we curve it out a little bit more. Go to the right, curve it in the other direction. So it's a little hard to see, but I think we got it there. Same thing with the top. Curve out as it goes away in each direction. Kind of reminds me sometimes like the way that we almost put the eyelashes in. Sort of that curved look. And get a few of those smaller ones in there. All right. And there is, not perfect, but a decent mouth. Um, pardon me. When we look at the mapping of the face, we talked about how we use the inside of our eye as a guide to where to put the edge of the nose. To figure out where the mouth goes, we know it sort of obviously goes under the nose and we showed where we started it, but the edge of the mouth, if you find the pupil and draw a line straight down from the pupil, that gives you where the edges of your mouth should be. So we know that this would be where we started. Farther, but it would, oop, yeah, this should come down a little farther. Uh, it's kind of a smushed, ooh, yeah, it looks really awkward with it smashed that close to the nose. So I'd probably want to, you know, maybe bring this down a little bit. But that's why I would probably have to do a bunch of practice drawings of this before we got started. But once I had sort of the correct spacing, I do know it needs to be that wide, and I can sort of shift it up and down until I feel it's spaced the right way from the mouth. Um, but again, this will be a demonstration where I will start with just a, sort of the shape of the head, how to draw some lines to map all of these things out. Um, but that'll be coming in a later video. So please remember, this is not graded. It is for fun. If you would like to add it to what you've had already, if you're working on a full portrait, this should sort of get the features done. And uh, yeah, keep on the lookout for sort of that last part of putting it all together. It'll come out later today or tomorrow. Um, and I hope you guys... Enjoy wrapping things up. Good luck with all your class meetings, and I hope to see as many of you as I can over the next few days. Take care.